Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite proudly presents part one of the first radio dramatization of William Shakespeare's tragic history of love and death, Othello. Our stars, Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. Marlowe, what's this great electing system of yours? Oh, you mean the Autolite electrical system that's designed to work as a perfect team. The generator, starting motor, distributor, and coil, spark plugs, battery, and all the other units are related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. Can it get me re-elected, Harlow? Senator, with an Autolite electrical system, you just can't lose. It starts the instant you turn the starting switch and works every second your engine runs. It works, too, every time you blow the horn, turn on lights, radio, heater, or electric windshield wiper. Sounds mighty important. It sure is, and that's why it pays to treat the electrical system of your car to a periodic checkup at your car dealer or your nearest authorized Autolite service station. To locate him, look in the classified section of the phone book under Automobile Electrical Service, or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed part one of William Shakespeare's Othello, starring Richard Widmark as Iago, and Kathy Lewis as Desdemona, and Elliot Lewis as the Moor, hoping once again to keep you in... Suspense. Act One, Scene One Venice, a street. Enter Rodrigo and Iago. You told me you hated the Moor. Despise me if I do not. I know my price, Rodrigo. I am worth no worse a place. But, says he, I have already chosen my officer. And what was he? Forsooth one Michael Cassio of Florentine. He in good time must his lieutenant be. And I, God bless the mark, his worship's ensign. I would not follow him then, good Iago. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters cannot be truly followed. In following him, I follow but myself. Call up her father. Rouse him. Make after him. Poison his delight. What ho, Barbaccio! Signor Barbaccio, ho! Look to your house, your daughter, and your bags. Thieves! Thieves! What is the reason of this terrible summons? What is the matter there? Signor, is all your family within? Are all doors locked? What have you lost your wit? Most reverend, Signor. Do you know my voice? Not I. What are you? My name is Roderigo. Oh, worse welcome. I have charged you not to haunt about my door. In honest plainness, you heard me say my daughter is not for you. Sir, I beseech you that your fair daughter, Desdemona, to the gross clasps of a lascivious moor has fled... Straight satisfy yourself. If she be in her chamber or your house, let loose on me the justice of the state for this delusion. Strike on the tinder hole. Give me a taper. Call up all my people. Light, I say, light! Farewell, Roderigo, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced against the moor. Lead to the arsenal, the raised search, and there will I be with him. So farewell. Scene two, outside the arsenal, a few moments later. Enter Othello, Iago, and attendants with torches. Tis better as it is. But I pray, sir, are you fast married? For be sure of this, that Signor Babancio is much beloved and hath in his effect a voice potential as double as the Duke's. He will divorce you. Let him do his spite. My loyal services shall outtongue his complaints. For no Iago, but that I love the gentle Desdemona. But look. What lights come yonder? These are the raised father and his friends. You were best go in. No, not I, I must be found. Is it they? By Janus, I think no. The servants of the Duke and my Lieutenant Cassio. The goodness of the night upon you, friends. What is the news, Cassio? 
The Duke does greet you, General, and he requires your haste, post-haste appearance, even on the instant. What's the matter, thank you? Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. You've been hotly called for. It is well I'm found by you. Come, Captain, will you go? Have with you. Here comes another troop to seek for you. It is Provencio, General. Be advised, he comes to bad intent. Hola, stand there. Senor, it is the Moor. Stand down with him. Thief! Keep up your bright sword for the jewel, Rustam. Foul thief. Where hast thou stowed my daughter? I'll have dispute it on. Where will you that I go to answer this your charge? To prison. What if I do obey? How may the Duke be therewith satisfied whose messengers are here about my side upon some present business of the state to bear me to him? The Duke in council and this time of the night? Bring him away. Mine's not an idle cause. The Duke himself cannot but feel this wrong as for his own. <laughs> Scene three, a council chamber. The Duke and Senator sitting at a table with lights. Valiant Othello. We must straight employ you against the general enemy, Ottoman. I did not see you. Welcome, Signor Brabantio. We lacked your counsel and your help tonight. So did I yours. Good your grace, pardon me. Neither my place nor aught I heard of business has raised me from my bed, for my particular grief is of so floodgate and bearing nature... That it then gluts and swallows other sorrows. Why, what's the matter? My daughter. Oh, my daughter. Dead? Aye, to me. She is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted by spells and medicines. Bought of mountebanks. Here is the man, this moor, whom now it seems your special mandate for the state affairs has hither brought. Othello, what in your own part can you say to this? I do beseech you, send for the lady, and let her speak of me before her father. If you do find me foul in her report, let your sentence even fall upon my life. Fetch Desdemona hither. Iago, conduct them. You best know the place. And till she come, as truly as to heaven, I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love and she in mine. You say it, Othello. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year. I ran it through. I spoke of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery. And my redemption thence. This to hear would Desdemona seriously incline and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse. When I did speak of some distressful stroke that my youth suffered, my story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith twas strange, twas passing strange. Twas pitiful, twas wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. She thanked me and bade me if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story and that would woo her. Upon this hint I spoke. She loved me for the dangers I had passed. And I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. Come hither, gentle mistress. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father... I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess due to the moor, my lord. Come hither, moor. I here do give you that with all my heart I would keep from you. For your sake, Jewel, I am glad at soul. I have no other child. I have done, my lord. We seek you now to the affairs of state. The Turk, with most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. And though we have there Montano, a substitute of most allowed sufficiency, yet opinion as sovereign mistress of effects throws a more safer voice on you. I do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites. At ten in the morning here, we'll meet again. Othello, leave some officer behind, and he shall our commission bring to you. Please, Your Grace, my ensign Iago, a man he is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance I assign my wife, with what else needful your good grace shall think to be sent after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. Adieu, brave Moor. 
Use Desdemona well. Look to her, Moore. Have a quick eye to see. She has deceived her father. May to thee. My life upon her faith. Come, Desdemona. I have but an hour of love, of worldly matters and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. What sayest thou, Rodrigo? What will I do? Why, go to bed and sleep. I will incontinently drown myself. If you do, I shall never love thee after. Why, thou silly gentleman? What should I do? I confess it is my shame to be so fond of her, but it is not in my virtue to amend it. Virtue a fig. It is in ourselves that we are thus or thus. Our bodies are gardens to the which our wills are gardeners. Come, be a man. Drown thyself. Drown cats and blind puppies. Put money in thy purse. It cannot be that Desdemona should long continue her love unto the moor. Put money in thy purse, nor he to her. It was a violent commencement, and you shall see an answerable sequestration. Put but money in thy purse. These moors are changeable in their wills. She must change for youth. She will find the error of her choice. She must have change. She must. If you must damn yourself, do it a more delicate way than drowning. Make all the money you can. You shall enjoy her. Will you be fast to my hopes? You are sure of me. Go, make money. I have told thee often, and I tell thee again and again. I hate the moor. Adieu. I'll be with thee betimes. Thus do I ever make my fool my purse. I hate the moor. Let me see now. Cassio's a proper man. To get his place and to make up my will... A double knavery. How? How? After some time to abuse Othello's ear that his lieutenant Cassio is too familiar with his wife. Cassio hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected. The moor is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. I have it. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. Autolite is bringing you Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in part one of William Shakespeare's Othello. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, how long has Autolite been making electrical systems? Ever since 1911, Senator, when Autolite developed the first two-unit, six-volt automotive electrical system ever used as original equipment. That was the granddaddy of today's complete and precision-made system, which includes generator, starting motor, distributor, and coil, spark plugs, battery, voltage regulator, and their thousands of component parts. All working together perfectly, eh, Harlow? Right, and you get the wonderful and economical operation you expect because it's an Autolite electrical system. That means that every unit and component part is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. Sounds convincing, Wilcox. So, friends, be sure to specify Autolite original service parts for your Autolite-equipped car. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in Mr. Lewis's production of William Shakespeare's Othello, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Act Two, Scene One. A month later, a seaport in Cyprus. The wars are over. Othello's sail has been sighted. Enter Cassio, Iago, Rodrigo, and Desdemona. The Moor's lieutenant pays innocent compliment to Desdemona. 
as Iago and the jealous Rodrigo stand apart. He takes her by the palm. I well said. Whisper. With as little a web as this will I ensnare as great a fly as Cassio. I smile upon her, do. I will catch you in your own courtesies. Good, well kissed. An excellent courtesy. Tis so indeed. Yet again your fingers to your lips. Would they were clister pipes for your sake. The moor, I know his trumpet. Tis truly so. Let's meet him and receive him. Oh, my fair warrior. My dear Othello. It gives me wonder great as my content to see you here before me. If it were now to die, it were now to be most happy. For I fear my soul has her content so absolute that not another comfort like to this succeeds in unknown fate. The heavens forbid but that our loves and comforts should increase even as our days do grow. Amen to that, sweet powers. I cannot speak enough of this content. It stops me here. It is too much of joy. And this, and this, the greatest discords be that e'er our hearts shall make. I prithee, good Iago, go to the bay and disembark my coffers. Come, Cassio. Come, Desdemona. Once more, well met at Cyprus. I will tell you this, good Roderigo. Desdemona is directly in love with Cassio. With him? Why, it is not possible. Mark me with what violence she first loved the Moor, but for bragging and telling her fantastical lies. And will she love him still for prating? Let not thy discreet heart think so. Her eye must be fed. And what delight shall she have to look on the devil? Her delicate tenderness will find itself abused and compel her to some second choice. Now, sir, this granted, who stands so eminently in the degree of this fortune as Cassio does? I cannot believe that in her. She's full of the most blessed conditions. Blessed, Fig's end. Didst not see her paddle with the palm of Cassio's hand? Didst not mark that? Yes, but that was but courtesy. Fletchery by this hand. An index, an obscure prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. They met so near with their lips that their breaths embraced together. But, sir, watch you tonight. Cassio knows you not. I'll not be far from you. Do you find some occasion to anger Cassio? Well... Provoke him that he may strike you. For even out of that will I cause these of Cyprus to mutiny, whose qualifications shall come into no true trust again but by the displanting of Cassio. So shall you have a shorter journey to your desires. I will do this if I can bring it to any opportunity. I warrant thee. Meet me by and by at the Citadel. I must fetch his necessaries ashore. Farewell. Adieu. I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip. Abuse him to the moor in the rank garb. Make the moor thank me, love me, and reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet, even to madness. Tis here, but yet confused. Knavery's plain face is never seen till used. Scene, a hall in the castle. The time, early night. Enter Iago and Cassio. We must to the watch, Iago. Not this hour, Lieutenant. Is not yet ten o'clock. Our general cast us thus early for the love of his Desdemona, who let us not therefore blame. She is a most exquisite lady. Indeed, she is a most fresh and delicate creature. What an eye she has. Methinks it sounds a parley of provocation. An inviting eye, and yet, methinks, right modest. And when she speaks, is it not an alarm to love? It is indeed perfection. Well... Happiness to them. Come, Lieutenant, I have a stoop of wine. And here without are a brace of cypress gallants that would fain have a measure to the health of a fellow. But not tonight, good Iago. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. But one cup I'll drink for you. I have drunk but one cup tonight. I am unfortunate in the infirmity and dare not task my weakness with any more. What, man? Tis a night of revels. The gallants desire it. Where are they? Here at the door. I pray you, call them in. I'll do it. But it dislikes... Look to 
your business. Do not think, gentlemen, I am drunk. This is my right hand and this is my left hand. I am not drunk now. I can stand well enough and speak well enough. Very well, then. You must not think that I am drunk. To the master's platform. Come, let's set the watch. Good Montano. You see this fellow that has gone before. He is a soldier fit to stand by Caesar. Yet I fear the trust a fellow put him in on some odd time of his infirmity will shake this island. Huh? But is he often thus? Tis evermore the prologue to his sleep. It were well the general were put in mind of it. Help! Help! But hark, what noise? Help, you rogue, you rascal! What's the matter, Lieutenant? I'll beat the knave into a wicker bottle! Beat me! Do you prate wrong? Good Lieutenant, pray, sir, hold your hand. Let me go, sir. I'll knock you all the mazard. Come, come, you're drunk. Drunk! Rodrigo, away. Go out and cry a mutiny. Nay, good lieutenant, sir, Montano, help, masters. Who's that that rings the bell? The town will rise. What is the matter here? Hold for your lives. Lieutenant, sir, Montano, gentlemen, have you forgot all sense of place and duty? Hold! The general speaks to you. Silence that dreadful bell. It strikes the aisle from her propriety. What's the matter, masters? Honest Tiago, that looks dead with grieving, speak. Who began this? I do not know. I cannot speak any beginning to this peevish odds. How came it, Michael, you were thus forgot? I pray you, pardon me, I cannot speak. Worthy Montano, what's the matter that you unlace your reputation thus and spend your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler? Give me answer to it. Worthy Othello, I am hurt to danger. Your officer, Iago, can inform you. Now, by heaven, if I stir or do but lift this arm, the best of you shall sink in my rebuke. Iago, who began? If you deliver more or less than truth, you are no soldier. Touch me not so near. I had rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. Yet I persuade myself to speak the truth shall nothing wrong him. Thus it is, General. Montano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help, and Cassio following him with determined sword to execute upon him. Sir, Montano steps into Cassio and entreats his pause. Myself the crying fellow did pursue. He swift a foot outran my purpose. When I came back, for this was brief, I found them close together at blow and thrust, even as again they were when you yourself did part them. Though Cassio did some little wrong to him... Yet surely he received from him that fled some strange indignity which patience could not pass. I know, Iago, your honesty and love does mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. Montano, for your hurts, myself will be your surgeon. Lead him off. Iago... Look with care about the town and silence those whom this vile brawl distracted. Good night. Tell me, Cassio, what was he that you followed with your sword? What had he done to you? I remember a mass of things, but nothing distinctly. A quarrel, but nothing wherefore. But you are now well enough. How came you thus recovered? It has pleased the devil, wrath. One unperfectness shows me another to make me frankly despise myself. Come, you are too severe a morally. I will ask him for my place again. He shall tell me I am a drunkard. Come, 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 come. You or any man living may be drunk at some time. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her importune her help to put you in your place again. She is of so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed a disposition. She holds it a vice in her goodness not to do more than she is requested. This broken joint between you and her husband, entreat her to splinter. You advise me well. I protest. In the sincerity of love and honest kindness, in the morning will I beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. I am desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. 
Good night, Lieutenant. I must to the watch. Good night. Honest, Iago. And what is he, then, that says I play the villain? When this advice is free, I give an honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the cost to win the moor again. For while this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortunes, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor, I'll pour this pestilence into his ear, that she repels him for her lust. And by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the moor. So will I turn her virtue into pitch, and out of her own goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. <laughs> Suspense. Part one of Othello by William Shakespeare. Tonight's stars Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, we conclude this first radio adaptation of William Shakespeare's tragic history of love and treachery and death, Othello. Again next week, our stars will be Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. And again next week, we hope to keep you in... Suspense! The Abridged Othello was adapted for suspense by Anthony Ellis and Elliot Lewis. The program was transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis, with music arranged by Lucian Morrowick from themes by Giuseppe Verdi. The orchestra was conducted by Lud Gluskin. Featured in tonight's cast were Joseph Kearns as Cassio, William Conrad as Montano, Whitfield Connor as Roderigo, Herb Butterfield as Brabacho, William Johnstone as the Duke, Byron Kane, and Larry Thorne. Richard Widmark may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Pick Up on South Street. And remember, next week we conclude Othello. You can buy Autolite electrical parts, Autolite stainful batteries, and Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Planned saving is best saving. Your bank will be happy to arrange for your regular purchase of United States savings bonds. The service is free. Why not sign up tomorrow for planned savings through savings bonds? This is the CBS Radio Network. Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents part two of the first radio dramatization of William Shakespeare's tragic history of love and death, Othello, 
Our stars, Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. Hi, Harlow. Doing some gardening? Yes, sir, Hap. And here's my favorite plant. Well, that's an Autolite Stay Full battery. Sure. The power plant for quick, dependable starts. And unlike other plants, this one needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Oh, it's a daisy, Harlow. And fern away the best battery blooming. It never gets bushed, eh, Harlow? <laughs> right. The Autolite Stay Full is tougher than a cactus. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give that famous battery longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. So, visit your Autolite battery dealer, the expert who services all makes of batteries. To locate him quickly, phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you the name of your nearest Autolite battery dealer, where you can get an Autolite Stayful, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to taillight, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed part two of William Shakespeare's Othello, starring Richard Widmark as Iago, Kathy Lewis as Desdemona, and Elliot Lewis as the Moor, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. The scene is Cyprus. Othello has returned triumphant from the wars, now to govern the island with his wife, Desdemona. The ensign, Iago, jealous of the position held by Cassio, lieutenant to Othello, plots revenge on both Cassio and the Moor, whom he hates. Two things are to be done. My wife, Amelia, must move for Cassio to her mistress, Desdemona. I'll set her on. Myself the while to draw the moor apart and bring him jump when he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Aye, that's the way. Dull not device by coldness and delay. In happy time, Iago. You have not been to bed then, Cassio? Why, no, the day it broke before we parted. I've made bold, Iago, to send in to your wife... My suit to her is that she will, to virtuous Desdemona, procure me some access. And I'll devise a mean to draw the moor out of the way that your converse and business may be more free. I humbly thank you for it. I never knew a Florentine more kind and honest. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I'm sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. Pray you come in. I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. I am much bound to you. Be assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in your behalf. Bounteous, madam, whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he's never anything but your true servant. Oh, sir, I thank you. Before Amelia here, I give you warrant of your place. Be assured, if I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore, be merry, Cassio, for I should rather die than give your cause away. Madam, here comes my lord. Madam, I'll take my leave. Why, stay and hear me speak. Madam, not now. I'm very ill at ease, unfit for mine own purpose. I'll do your discretion. I like not that. What do you say? Nothing, my lord. Or if... uh, I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord? No, sure, I cannot think it that he would sneak away so guilty like seeing you coming. I do believe to see. How now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your lieutenant Cassio... Good, my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, I pray you call him back. 
Went he hence now? Yes, faith so humble that he has left part of his griefs with me. I suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona. Some other time. But shall be shortly. The sooner sweet for you. Shall be tonight for supper. No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner, then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the Citadel. Why, then, tomorrow night or Tuesday morn, on Tuesday morn or night or Wednesday morn. Name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith, he's penitent. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello. No more. Let him come when he will. I will deny you nothing. Whereon I do beseech you grant me this to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Amelia, come. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord... What do you say, Argo? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did from first to last. Why do you ask? But for a satisfaction of my thoughts, no further harm. Why of your thought, Argo? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very often. Indeed. Indeed. Aye, indeed. Do you discern aught in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my lord? Honest, aye, honest. My lord, for aught I know. What do you think? Think, my lord? Think, my lord. By heaven, he echoes me. As if there was some monster in his thought, too hideous to be shown. You meant something, I heard you say, but now. You liked not that when Cassio left my wife. What did you not like? If you do love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think you do. And for I know you are full of love and honesty and weigh your words before you give them breath. Therefore, these stops of yours frighten me the more. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn, I think that he is honest. I think so, too. Men should be what they seem. Certain men should be what they seem. Why, then, I think Cassio's an honest man. Nay, yet there's more in this. I prithee speak to me as to thy thinking. Good, my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to that all slaves are free to. Utter my thoughts... Why, you say they are vile and false. You conspire against your friend, Iago, if you but think him wronged and make his ear a stranger to your thoughts. It were not for your quiet nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty, or wisdom to let you know my thoughts. By heaven, I'll know your thought. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock that meat it feeds on. Why? Why is this? Do you think I'd make a life of jealousy? No, Iago. I see before I doubt... When I doubt, prove, and on the proof, there is no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. I am glad of it. For now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eye thus, not jealous nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused. Look to it. Do you say so? She did deceive her father, marrying you. And when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. And so she did. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot. Not not a jot. If faith, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love. But I do see your mood. I pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, nor to larger reach than to suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, my speech should fall into such vile success as my thoughts aim not at. Cassio is my worthy friend. My lord, I see you are moved. No, not much moved. I do not think, but Desdemona is honest. Long live she so. And long live you to think so. Farewell. If you do perceive more... Let me know more. Set your wife, Amelia, to observe. Leave me, Iago. My lord, I take my leave. If she be false, oh, then heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How now, my dear Othello, your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited to attend your presence? I am to blame. Why is your speech so faint? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Twill away again. Let me but bind your head. Within this hour, it will be well again. Your handkerchief is too little. Othello 
puts the handkerchief from him, and Desdemona unwittingly drops it. Come, I'll go in with you. I am very sorry that you are not there. They exit, leaving Amelia alone in the garden. I'm glad I have found this handkerchief. This was her first remembrance from the moor. In recent days, my wayward husband has a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token, for a fellow conjured her she should ever keep it, that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to. How now? What do you hear alone? Do not, you chide. I have a thing for you. A thing for me? What will you give me now for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the Moor first gave to Desdemona. That which so often you did bid me steal. Has stolen it from her? No, Faith. She let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage I being here took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench. Give it me. What will you do with it that you have been so earnest to have me filch it? Why, what's that to you? If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady, she'll run mad when she shall lack it. I have use for it. Go, leave me. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this handkerchief and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The moor already changes with my poison. I did say so. Look where he comes. Uh, false to me. To me. Why, how now, General? No more of that. Be gone. You've set me on the rack. I swear it is better to be much abused than but to know a little. I am sorry to hear this. Villain. Be sure thou prove my lover, strumpet. Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof. Or by the worth of man's eternal soul, you'd better have been born a dog than answer my weight wrath. Is come to this. Make me to see it. I'll have some proof. I'll not endure it. I see, sir, you are eaten up with passion. I do repent me that I put it to you. You would be satisfied... Would nay, I will. Give me a living reason. She's disloyal. I do not like the office. But since I am entered into this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. With Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleep will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep, I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary. Let us hide our love. And then, sir, would he grip and wring my hand, cry out, sweet creature, and then kiss me hard as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, and then cried, cursed fate that gave thee to the moor. Monstrous. Monstrous. Tis a shrewd doubt, though it be but a dream. And this may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her to pieces. Nay, but be wise, yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me but this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. It was my first gift. I know not that. But such a handkerchief, I'm sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? If be that. If be that or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Now do I see tis true. Oh, blood, Iago. Blood. Then witness... That here Iago does give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wrong Othello's service. Let him command, and to obey shall be in me remorse what bloody business ever. I will upon the instant put you to it. Within these three days, let me hear you say that Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. Tis done at your request. But let her live. Damn her! Lewd minx, damn her! Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now art thou my lieutenant. I am your own. Forever. <laughs> Auto 
Light is bringing you Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in part two of William Shakespeare's Othello. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Ah, me time's the time, eh, Harlow? Yeah, the time to get an Autolite Stay Full battery, the perfectly performing, peerless producer of prompt propulsions that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. A pretty particular package, Harlow. Yes, Hap, and that personable, power-packed Paragon is persistently prepared to give quick-starting power every time. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give the Autolite Stay Full battery longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. And what's the name again, Harlow? Why, the Autolite Stay Full, the battery that says right on the case, needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Friends, to quickly locate your nearest Autolite battery dealer, just phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you his name and address. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in the concluding act of Mr. Lewis's production of William Shakespeare's Othello, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Desdemona's bedchamber, early evening. Well, my good lady. How do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Give me your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. It yet has felt no age, nor known no sorrow. Hot, hot, and moist. Here's a young and sweating devil here that commonly rebels. It is a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so, for t'was that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. I cannot speak of this. Come, come, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sullen room offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave you. I have it not about me. Not? No, faith, my lord. That's a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She dying gave it me and bid me when my fate would have me wife to give it her. I did so. And take heed on it. Make it a darling like your precious eye. To lose or give it away was such perdition as nothing else could match. Faith is true. Most veritable, therefore, look to it well. Then would to God that I had never seen it. Ah, wherefore? Why do you speak so startling and rash? Is it lost? Is it gone? Speak, is it out of the way? Bless Say you? It is not lost, but what and if it were? (sighs) Ah! I say it is not lost. Fetch it. Let me see it. Why, so I can, sir, but I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. I pray let Cassio be received again. Fetch me that handkerchief my mind misgives. I pray talk to me of Cassio. The handkerchief. A man that all his time has founded his good fortunes on your love, shared danger. The handkerchief. Faith, you are to blame. Stones! They that mean virtuously and yet do so, the devil their virtue tempts, and they tempt heaven. So they do nothing. Tis a venial slip. But if I give my wife a handkerchief... What then? Why, then tis hers, my lord. And being hers, she may, I think, bestow it on any man. She is protectress of her honor, too. May she give that? Oh, tis foul in her. With mine, officer! That's fouler. Get me some poison, Iago. This night. I'll not expostulate with her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again. This night, Iago. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. Good. Good. The justice of it pleases. Very good. And for Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You shall hear more by midnight. Who's there? Othello? Hi, Desdemona. 
Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what may you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. Now, heaven forfend, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? Aye, I do. May heaven have mercy on me. Think on thy sins. They are loves I bear to you. And for that you die. That death's unnatural that kills for loving. What's the matter? That handkerchief which I so loved and gave you, you gave to Cassio. No! By my life and soul, send for the man and ask him... Sweet soul, take heed. Take heed of perjury. You're on your deathbed. Aye, but not yet to die. Yes, presently. Therefore, confess you freely of your sin. You are to die. Lord, have mercy on me. I say amen. And have you mercy, too. I never did offend you in my life. Never loved Cassio. Never gave him token. Oh, perjured woman. You stone my heart and make me call what I intend to do a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I never gave it to him. Send for him hither. Let him confess the truth. He has confessed. What, my lord? That he has used thee. How? Unlawfully? Aye. He will not say so. No, his mouth is stopped. Honest Iago has taken order for it. My fear interprets then. What? Is he dead? Had all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all. Alas, he is betrayed and I undone. Oh, strumpet! Weep you for him to my face! Banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Kill me tomorrow. Let me live tonight. Nay, it is too late. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord. My Lord, my Lord. What ho? My lord, my lord. Good, my lord, I would speak a word with you. Tis Amelia. Ah, no more moving. Still is the grave. My lord. If she come in, she'll sure speak to my wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. I have no wife. I don't speak to her, I may speak with you, good, my lord. Soft by and by. Let me the curtains draw. What's the matter? Oh, my good lord. What now? Falsely. Falsely murder. Alas, what cry is that? That? What? Out oh, on alas, it is my lady's voice. Oh, help. Help. Oh, help. Oh, lady, speak again. Sweet Desdemona. Oh, sweet mistress, speak. The guiltless dead. I die. Oh, who has done this deed? It was I that killed her. She was false as water. Thou as rash as fire to say that she was false. Oh, she was heavenly true. Your husband knew it all. My husband? Your husband. That she was false to wedlock? I with Cassio. If he say so, he lies to his heart. She was too fond of her most filthy bargain. Uh, help, 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 help! The Moor has killed my mistress. Murder, murder! What is the matter? How now, General? Oh, you come, Iago. You have done well that men must lay their murders on your neck. What is the matter? Disprove this villain if you are a man. He says you told him that his wife was false. I told him what I thought and told no more than what he found himself was apt and true. But did you ever tell him she was false? I did. You told a lie. An odious, damned lie. She fought with Cassio? Iago knows that she with Cassio is the act of shame a thousand times committed. And she did gratify his amorous works with the recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. It was a handkerchief. Oh, thou dull moor. The handkerchief you speak on, I found by fortune and did give my husband... For often, with a solemn earnestness, more than indeed belonged to such a trifle, he begged of me to steal it. Villainous! She gave it, Cassio. No, alas, I found it, and I did gift my husband. Filth, you lie! Are there no stones in heaven but what serve for the thunder? Precious villain! Bring his sword from him! I bleed, sir, but not killed. I am not sorry, neither. I'd have thee live. For in my sense, it is happiness to die. Othello, you must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off. 
you shall close prison arrest till that the nature of your fault be known to the Venetian state. Come, bring him away. Soft, you. A word or two. I have done the state some service and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of them as they are. Nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. I kissed thee ere I killed thee. No way but this, killing myself to die upon a kiss. <laughs> oh, look on the tragic lodging of this bed. This is thy work, Iago. The object poisoned sight, let it be hid. Myself will straight aboard... And to the state, this heavy act with heavy heart relate. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's stars, Richard Whitmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> Next week, a story based on fact. The true report of a man who lost a jar which contained the destruction of a city. It is called A Vial of Death, and it will star Mr. Lloyd Nolan. That's next week on... Suspense. The Abridged Othello was adapted for suspense by Anthony Ellis and Elliot Lewis. The program was transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis, with music arranged by Lucian Marwick from themes by Giuseppe Verdi. The orchestra was conducted by Lud Gluskin. Featured in tonight's cast were Joseph Kearns as Cassio, William Conrad as Montano, and Irene Tedrow as Amelia. Your narrator is Larry Thor. Richard Widmark may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Pick Up on South Street. And remember next week, Mr. Lloyd Nolan in A Vial of Death. Buy Autolite Stayful Batteries, Autolite Resistor or Standard Type Spark Plugs, and Autolite Electrical Parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.